Hello, my soccer universe, for a preview of this year's Europa League final between Atalanta and Bayer Leverkusen. And if you're asked me or many other so called experts, I wouldn't call myself an expert, I'm just a freak watching a lot of uh, soccer, but I would say that this is the most interesting final. Yes, it's a hipsters final, it's between two teams that have long been overlooked, but that will change this Wednesday when they are fully put on the spotlight. So, it's also an interesting final in the sense that these are combined the two smallest teams to ever be in a European final. So with Atalanta, a beautiful city, but not a huge city, and Leverkusen, of course, which is a glorified suburb of Cologne, if you would like, of course, propped up by the Bayer uh, conglomerate, if you would like, uh, they are very well behind the success of the team. However, they have been initially made as a club for the workers of the Bayer company. And yeah, once they decide to really hit the next uh, level, that would have been great. But let's start first things first before we go into the teams and how that final may go. Where's the final being played? Well, the whole city is Dublin, capital of Ireland, of course. For me, I've never been there. I hear it's a really beautiful city. Uh, there's a lot of his history with the, you know, the Irish struggle for independence also in there. There's a beautiful castle, there's of course the Harp Bridge uh, and, and so on. And of course, it's also the home of Guinness and you know, a lot of pubs in there. So that adds to the whole uh, vibe of the city. It's a very uh, well visited city. Let's put it that way. Fortunately, as I said, I have not been in there. And in Dublin, there's only one stadium that can host such a final, which is uh, the new Lansdowne Road Stadium. I mean, there was the old one. I know it's not called it. Uh, UEFA calls it the Dublin uh, Stay Stadium. It has, of course, a sponsor name as well. It's one of the more interesting stadiums, if you were to ask me. It is very pleasingly done. Uh, due to uh, there being housing on one side uh, of uh, the stadium, there's only a lower tier, whereas on all the other sides, uh, there are three tiers around, which makes it quite unique looking. But also, um, I think over it's a really, really beautiful and atmospheric stadium. Um, Atalanta will be the home team for this uh, final. That's why they will most likely wear their uh, black and blue jerseys by Leverkusen. For the Ministry of Persia is the away team. I can only see them wearing their white or grey jer jersey, which uh, is quite an outstanding jersey, I gotta say. The referee for the final is Romanian top referee Istvan Kovac, of course, having Hungarian roots as well, uh, hence the name. And uh, this is his second European final. He already did the 22, the first ever conference league final between Roma and Feyenoord, which Roma, of course, won. I do remember some uh, whistle swallowing there, but it was not as egregious as in the same year uh, in the Europa League final. At least this is what my memory serves me. However, uh, he has been in the upper echelon of UEFA's referees for a while. And he, of course, uh, one of his most famous ones when he was uh, re refereeing cities 4-3 win over Real Madrid in the 22 Champions League. He was also in the previous Champions League final, the fourth official. So really, really high level refereeing and I think he will be a capable re referee for this final. Let's look a little bit into the teams uh, and let's start with the path to the final and we'll start with the team I'm wearing which is Atalanta who were in a group with Rakov Chen Stochkova, with Sporting and of course with Sturm Graz. And if you just look at their results, I mean the left one is always the goals that Atalanta scored, the right one is always the goals that Atalanta conceded. Two things stick out, there's only one team that scored more than one goal against Atalanta, which was Sturm Graz in the away leg, which was a 2-2 draw. And they only lost one game so far, which was the home game against Liverpool, but they already won 3 0 at Anfield. And the Anfield um, win is, is, of course, the big one there. They won their group ahead of Sporting, and then in the first knockout game, they had to face Sporting again, something that they will share uh, with their finals opponent. Uh, given that Sporting had a really great season, beating them twice 3 2 an aggregate is quite an impressive feat. 
they also, I mean, the most impressive is, of course, beating Liverpool 3-1 on aggregate and on the night at Anfield, really denying them a uh, possible Europa League trophy that uh, Liverpool were definitely craving. Uh, it has to be said that this is probably the biggest upset that we've seen in Europe so far. And then they were lucky to only get out with a 1-1 draw at OM, but in the return, like they completely steamrolled the French side and made it into the final. Now going over to the Leverkusen side of things, they had a little bit of an easier group with Hecken, which they disposed easily with two wins, also Molde, two wins, and Karabakh, also very, very convincingly overall. However, they had to face Karabakh again in the round of 16, similarly, as I said, to Atalanta. And this was a much, much tighter affair. Karabakh almost ended the unbeaten streak of Leverkusen, more on that in a little bit, by uh, leading twice 2-0. In the away leg, Leverkusen got it to a draw and then in the return leg, I mean, the 2-0 was late and Leverkusen turned around in stoppage time, nonetheless with two Patrick Schick goals. This was more or less one of the stars, this is a typical uh, feature of Leverkusen this season, of finding winners late, especially in stoppage time. Uh, West Ham never really stole the chance. Yes, the 1-1 one, one, and this was again a late goal that Leverkusen equalized, West Ham maybe in the First half of the home leg uh, had a little, little bit of chance, but uh, even in the first leg, I mean, Leverkusen completely dom dominated West Ham. And Roma, you know, De Rossi said, in the first leg we could have scored three goals, but Leverkusen should have scored nine. And it was a very complete performance, goals by Wirtz and a brilliant one by Andrich gave them the lead. Roma actually again packed them back. It was level thanks to two penalties and again the duck deep. The streak was about to end. And yes, Roma had to come out to force overtime because Leverkusen had scored uh, a, a goal uh, to Mancini on goal. But in the end, they again find Iquaza keep the unbeaten streak alive. That's the story of Leverkusen this season. Uh, if you combine the two teams overall, um, you know, you can definitely see everything is leaning a little bit more to Leverkusen. They won one German championship this year. They already won a German Cup, uh, this was in the early 90s against the Hertha B team, the M amateur team, but also Atalanta has won an Italian Cup, but this was in the early 60s, so long time ago. Crucially enough, uh, Leverkusen won the Europa League, or better, its predecessor, the UEFA Cup, in uh, 1988 in a crazy final where they lost the first leg to Espanyol 3-0 came back in the home leg, won a 3-0 and then on penalties. I think Erich Rilbeck was the coach back then. Uh, also interesting, not too long ago, the two teams met in the Europa League and Atalanta won both legs. So uh, the head-to-head -head is the one thing that speaks for Atalanta. However, it was also a very different Leverkusen side to the one that we have currently. Uh, if you look at the overall statistics, you see that uh, Leverkusen is a bit more valuable. I mean, almost 600 million, whereas Atalanta's uh, squad is uh, worth 350 million euros. Leverkusen is a tad younger and has also, of course, more international players. So you already get a little bit the feeling that this Leverkusen team is uh, should be considered the favorite in this final overall. Um, it's two of the best stories going into this final. Uh, we have the great unbeaten run for Leverkusen. Uh, we have they won the first uh, German championship, unbeaten the first ever German team to do so. And uh, as I said, uh, so far I rank them as the second best ever um, unbeaten team post-war. Uh, so far, if they win the Europa League and if they win the German German Cup, I might give them the best, the title of the best ever, uh, because that would be really unique and something absolutely extraordinary, especially considering the status of them within the league, because they are not even the second best team in Germany. Uh, on a grand scale of things, there's Bayern, there's Dortmund, you might even call that Leib Leipzig has more clout at, at the moment, but Leverkusen. They have been a consistent third uh, best team, or I would say the better of the past two decades. So this is the one great story. And you know, with Chabelon, so you have just this, uh, a manager that has done one of the best coaching jobs in uh, this century, at least, uh, that just oozes class all, all around. On the other side, you have Atalanta. They call themselves the queen of the province. 
they are not a big team in Italy. Before they had Gasparini, they were never there that good. But now they have two, uh, two sec uh, third place finishes. They reached the Coppa Italia three times, however, losing the final on every single occasion. They also had a deep foray in, you know, in the um, Corona season into the quarterfinals of the, of, of the Champions League. Something Champions League was never even thought of, of Atalanta. Atalanta is a very well-run team. Gasperini, uh, probably one of the most underrated coaches of our time. The problem is his personality is kind of grating, uh, which kind of doesn't help him because there is a lot of goodwill coming. But as soon as you get to know him a little bit better, not the most pleasant uh, personality of overall. I would say the Atalanta side that he built is very resourceful. Uh, has with uh, Ten Kopp Miners uh, a Dutch player that has to be considered among the best players in Serie A this season. One of the most underrated players overall. No one is talking about that. I think he will join a big team after this season for sure. You also have the redemption story of Skamaka who came from the Premier League but didn't do much. Now He's scoring crazily. Of course, he did not play in the Coppa Italia final when he was in fine form because he got a second ye yellow card. So he will be one of the key players to watch him and Cope Miners. But then there's, of course, uh, a Pazalic and so on. Uh, they unfortunately are missing Deron and Kolasinac uh, due to injuries. And they also will play their cup goalkeeper, but so does Leverkusen. Players on the Leverkusen side to watch, of course, Florian Wirtz and Granit Xhaka. And when I said that Atalanta is one of the most resourceful teams, in Europe, uh, there's one that's more resourceful, and that's via Leverkusen. Leverkusen, can you beat you ever which way? They are good enough to control possession, to have uh, to force their game onto them. But when they're ahead, uh, or, or 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 when you're ahead, they can also hit you on the counter attack really, really, really well with Frimpong and so on. It's a really tough team to play against, and so far, as we know, no one has beaten them. I think this final could be really exciting. I know that from the get-go those are two very uh, offensively minded teams. This doesn't necessarily always translate into a final. The last three Europa League finals all went to penalties, so uh, one could see this one going to penalties as well, in a way. I think we'll get with won't go as far, but you know, I may have, I'm, I, I may be wrong here. Uh, no denying, I'm. both sides will be real fun. I have a little bit more sympathy towards Atalanta. However, if Leverkusen would win that, that one uh, is definitely something that I will cherish because this is, this is one of the best teams that we've seen in a long, 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 long time outside of the big giants from the Premier League. My model has Leverkusen, of course, a slight favorite, 56% over 44%, similar percentages all over the place. Both teams come with wins into the finals. Atalanta, of course, the little downer of not having won the Coppa Italia final, where Juventus really played well and was very defensive. Is this a blueprint for Leverkusen? I just don't see Leverkusen Le Le shutting up shop. So, those are my few thoughts on the final. Please let, let me know who you think will win. I know it seems very much tilted towards Leverkusen, but this Atalanta side can end unbeaten streaks. You know, they went to Anfield, beat that streaks, not all lost there. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this little preview. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I'll give you a full review of the Europa League final on Thursday. Up until that, bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!